Welcome to the Methodist Church Guyana District's Divine Worship. We are happy that you have joined us today. The Methodist Church Guyana District is one of eight districts that comprise the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas. There are six circuits that make up the Guyana District. Burbis, Essequibo, Friendship, Georgetown, Mahaika, and West Demerara, with the United Mission Linden as an associate church. The president of the Guyana district is Bishop the Reverend Taslin Kofia Niles. The secretary to the district conference is Reverend Mervyn Ossie Austin while the treasurer of the district funds is Miss Yolanda Abiola James. The mission of our church is to spread scriptural holiness for the reformation of the nation, while our district theme is sanctify yourselves for mission, connect, give hope, restore, the church could be contacted on telephone number 592-226-1215. Our email address is guyanamethodist at yahoo.com. You can follow us on our YouTube channel and Facebook page as Methodist Church Guyana District and on Instagram as Methodist Guy 592 District. Every blessing.
Greetings in Christ, viewers, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our divine worship experience. It's always a joy to have you worshiping with us. Today is first Lord's Day after Epiphany, second Sunday of the year 2022. May your heart be filled with peace as we worship Him in spirit and in truth. They call it to worship. Come, let us adore God for he reigns forever. Great is his name in all the earth. Let all those who put their trust in the Lord rejoice. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The hymn, praise him, praise him. Voices in praise, number 55. of kings. You are the Lord of lords. The songwriter says, I can search for all eternity and find no one else like you. We adore you, Lord. We worship you. What a wonderful God you are in all the earth. As we gather this morning in worship, I pray that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, causing us to experience the change you want us to experience. Make it possible that as we glorify your name, as we proclaim your holy name, souls will be saved and lives will be transformed. Have your way, O Lord, and let our adoration be acceptable in your sight, in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I now invite you to continue in prayer. 
at this time we all confess our sins to God and pray for his forgiveness. Let us pray. Almighty and Heavenly Father, we now bring our confession to you and we pray for forgiveness. We have sinned against you and against our fellow brothers and sisters. We therefore acknowledge the need of your pardon and strength. Merciful God, pardon and forgive us. Loving God, we have failed many times for not seeking strength from you. The good that we would do, we have not done. And the evil we would not do, we have done. Therefore ask for your pardon and your strength. Merciful God, forgive and fortify us. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may be able to obey your word and be faithful to you. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, listen to the good news. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If we sincerely confess our sins to God and pray for his forgiveness, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We are forgiven. And the church say, Amen. Thanks be to God. We are forgiven. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer as we give Him thanks for all that He has done. That we are forgiven, Lord, and we thank you. That we are sent free to live according to your will, we thank you. We thank you for this day and the opportunity to worship and meditate on your holy word. Let your word speak to us and to our situation. Prepare us in your grace and equip us for your service. In Jesus' name, Amen. We now sing the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, Voices in Grace, number 236. St. Luke chapter 3, 15 to 17, 
and 21 and 22. But as we prepare to read the scripture passages, my sisters and my brothers, let us now pray they collect together. Lord of all time and eternity, you open the heavens and reveal yourself as Father and the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen and Amen. Isaiah 43, 1-7 but now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have with thee. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight, and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for you, for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring you offspring from the east, and from the west, I will gather you. I will say to the north, Give them up, and to the salt, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now please stand, my sisters and my brothers, as we read from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 3, reading from verse 15 to verse 17, 21 and 22. Glory be to you, O Christ. As the people were filled, with expectations and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the child, he will burn with unconscious fire. The baptism of Jesus. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens was open, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily from like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, my beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of Christ. 
Praise be to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, sisters and brothers, let us sing the hymn, Light of the World, Thy Beams I Bless. Voices in Praise, number 270. Fear and anxiety. 
the Jews were in a similar situation when the Babylonians had destroyed Jerusalem city and God's temple in 586 BC. God's word eventually came to them saying, Fear not, for I am with you. This fear not, or do not be afraid, appear 42 times in the Bible. In the book of Isaiah alone, it is mentioned 25 times. So prophet Isaiah played a very important role in reaching out to Israel. Isaiah describes the critical condition of the Jews before and during exile in Babylon. This exile lasted them five decades. The cause of the defeat was sin related. When you sin, you pay for the consequence. The Jews took for granted the patience and the mercy of God. Unfaithful to God, they had been punished and become vulnerable. So these are my three quick observations. One, disobedience and unfaithfulness to God carries consequences. One of the consequences of being unfaithful and disobedient to God is the spiritual emptiness and confusion it causes to take root inside of you. All of us have been there feeling spiritually low and empty when we are disconnected from the source. There is no peace within and our heart is troubled. In Psalm 25 verses 16 and 17, the psalmist prayed, and I quote, Turn to me, O God, and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the trouble of my heart and free me from my anguish. And of course, this is what happens when you are not, when we are not aligned with the Lord. There is a spiritual emptiness and you feel lonely and unsecure. Secondly, disobedience and unfaithfulness leads to a carelessness attitude. It is like you claim self-sufficiency. You do not need God, but people need the Lord. In Isaiah 42, Israel became blind and deaf. They saw many things but paid no attention. They were not willing to walk in God's way and listen to his instructions. As a result, they became vulnerable to the enemy's attack. Look at it and see. People who stopped walking in God's way and listening to his instructions, they are like chaff and the wind drives away, said the psalmist in Psalm 1. I want you to always seek guidance from God and let Him lead you. It is not easy, but it is possible. He says, and brothers, if disobedience and unfaithfulness leads to spiritual emptiness and careless attitude, here is the third observation. No one ever reaches too far that God will not accept it back. And this is the good news. At least you take this with you. If you will commit to obey God and listen to Him, He will take you back. To obey and seek to be faithful to God may simply mean that you allow yourself to be led by Him. When you decide to go your own way, you soon find yourself at the wrong place and at the wrong time. When you are at the wrong place, two things can happen. One, you may end there. And two, soon or later, God can rescue you and get you out of there. 
His nature, God's nature, is to have mercy and His love endures forever. According to Luke chapter 19 verse 10, the Son of God has come to seek and save the lost. I'm not sure who is listening right now and where the devil has already taken you to, but I pray that if you happen to be in the wrong place, you will fight to leave that place in order to be where God wants you to be in Jesus' name. The first 39 chapters of the book of Isaiah expose the sinful way of the Israelites, calling them to repent and announce judgment. But from verse, from, from chapter 40, they turn chief back to hope and reassurance. God does not want anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance and be saved. When God said to the Jews in exile not to fear, he meant that their deliverance is on the way. It, mean, it means that there is a new set plan being established, a plan of peace, a plan for peace, and a breach. Same message can be applied for you and for me. Same message can be applied for all of us. In whatever situation you may be presently, hear what God is saying. Fear not. The Lord your God is with you. Fear not means you may still be in it, but it does not mean that you will remain there forever. Fear not means he has not finished with you as yet. Fear not means what you are going through right now is about to end. Fear not means no matter how far you have been from God, He will give you an opportunity to repent and come back to Him. Finally, fear not also means that there is hope in the Lord even when the world seems to be falling apart. Are you presently living in fear? and anxiety. If so, I invite you to believe in the one who opened the Red Sea and granted safe passage to the Israelites. I invite you to believe in the one in whose name we have salvation. The one who sent John the Baptist ahead to prepare the way of the Lord. The one who cried from heaven, You are this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. He is the one who says, Fear not, I am with you. Fear not, I am with you. In Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, he invites us all to come together. He says, come, let us reason together. Though our sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Brothers and sisters, if you know God as a God of grace and mercy, you have a true knowledge of Him. He sent his only son to die on the cross for you and for me. He is gracious and he is merciful. And I ask you again, are you in a situation right now that causes you to be fearful and anxious? It may be the fear of becoming sick or the fear of losing your job with this COVID-19 that is going rampant in our society, in our communities, in our countries. In any case, remember that God is in charge. So do not be panicked, but trust the Lord who says, Fear not. Fear not. I will fight the fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Fear not. 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word and the confidence that you are with us in the midst of tribulation, uncertainties. And so, Father, I pray now that you touch lives, touch those who need a torch from you, bless those who are feeling fearful, lonely, anxious. I pray that in the name of Jesus. I can hear you say, I am with you. So once again, Father, let your word continue to speak to us and to our situation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The hymn God is with us. God is with us. Uh, Methodist Hippo um, 252.
sisters and brothers I know invite us to to intercede for others pray our intercession let us pray loving God Heavenly Father we come before you laying our panic and our anxiety trusting that you will fill us with your peace so many of us are asking what is next and why is me help us O oh Lord to remember that you are the God of our beginning and the goal of our end and that there is not a single situation in our life that you cannot handle when we are crushed by fears and worries Lord remind us of your power and your grace in our lift before you those who due to the lack of trust and inability to stay focused on you have caused them to compromise their faith Lord have mercy on them we pray for those who have lost their job right now and their incomes those who cannot pay their bills or feed their families those who are afraid of getting sick or a member of the family getting sick Lord please grant them peace that is beyond our understanding have mercy Lord on all families grieving the loss of a loved one due to illness including COVID-19 pandemic how long Lord will this pandemic come to an end is the cry of many Lord let your kingdom come let your will be done and incline your ear to our cry for we ask in all the name by the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior Amen Amen let us pray the Lord's prayer together our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for that is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen amen brothers and sisters in Christ on behalf of the District President Bishop T. Kofi Annan, District Secretary Reverend Mervyn Austin and staff, we thank you all for worshiping with us today. We celebrate with those who are having a special anniversary and birthday and throughout the, the month of January. May God's blessings be with you all. Now, sisters and brothers, I invite you to listen to the different notices. Uh, join us again next Sunday for worship at the same time, 900 hours. Remember to send your children to Sunday school at your respective time. District Bible study next week, Wednesday, usual time, 1730 hours. Conference begins the 20th to the 30th January. You will hear more details later on. Memorial service for the late Reverend Glenna Spencer, former bishop of the Diana district, will be held at the Trinity Methodist Church on the 28th at 1600 hours. Finally, conference closing service and ordination is due on the 30th january at 1000 hours at the trinity methodist church thank you for listening our closing hymn is fight the good fight with all thy might voices in voice 329 
now the benediction. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forever. Amen and Amen.